we'll be looking at John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verse 16. I'll be talking today, sharing on the person of the Holy Spirit. The person of the Holy Spirit. John chapter 14, verse 16 says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, which the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and he shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. The issue of the Holy Spirit, as I was saying, is something that we know theoretically. Most of us, we can write a 10-page essay on the Holy Spirit. And that was my experience too until this year. February 2nd. And I come to realize that it is one thing to know the Holy Spirit is a person. It is another thing to relate with the Holy Spirit as a what? As a person. Before now, I write... Benihin's book, Welcome Holy Spirit, Good Morning Holy Spirit, and Anointing. I read them several times, so I can tell you that I have the what? The theory about the Holy Spirit as a person. I even read a book by Paul Young Gicho, the Holy Spirit, my senior word, partner. So you can see, in fact, there was time when Capro Ministries are doing a program, it lasted for about four years or so. And the topic I was discussing is what? The Holy Spirit. I was a person that was given to share on the word and the Holy Spirit. And I thought I was doing a very good job going around teaching about the Holy Spirit. Then one day, when we are still fellowshipping at home, I taught on baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I was urging people that ensure that you are baptized with the Holy Spirit because there are things of God, the realms of God that you will never understand until you are baptized with the Holy Spirit. You will never understand them. And after I finished, I remember that evening, I went to my room to pray, you know. I usually talk to the Holy Spirit. He talks to me. But I had God spoke to me that evening and it was a troubling thing to me. The Holy Spirit said to me, you are talking about baptism of the Holy Spirit, but you have never talked to them about what? About me. The voice was so clear in my spirit. I said, I thought that when I'm talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I'm also talking about what? about the Holy Spirit. And I begin to do a search of my heart. How have I related with the Holy Spirit? Of course, I wake up in the morning and I say, Good morning, Holy Spirit. And I pray. And I do one thing or the other. I didn't know that apart from just praying to the Holy Spirit, there is something about the Holy Spirit that is so real and so genuine. After I was doing searching on the Holy Spirit, suddenly in the midnight, around 3 a.m., you know, I usually, that time I used to wake up by 5 o'clock to pray. I'll take one hour, I'll pray by myself, then by six, I'll wake up my family, then we pray, then I'll come back and read the scripture like that. And then that time, as early as 3 a.m. in the morning, I heard as if somebody would tap me. 
And I wake up, I usually have a watch just across my bed. I looked and it was what? 3 a.m. I said, two more hours of what? Two more hours of sleep before prayer time. But I noticed that what? As if there is a presence in the room. I was feeling sleepy, but I feel as if someone is dragging me to my feet. The moment I went on my knees, suddenly I was in the spirit. The presence of God was so thick. The Holy Spirit came to my room. And he was, he was upon me as if I was covered with a blanket. I didn't know where I was. And the Holy Spirit revealed himself to me as a person. In fact, particularly as the Lord of the harvest. I was wrapped in the blanket of love and scriptures were rushing through my mind. The presence of God was so thick. And I think the experience lasts for about 20 to 30 minutes. By the time I came back to my senses, I look at the word, it was exactly 6 a.m. Three hours has passed as if it was 20 minutes. And I begin to understand from that day, I had an experience with the Holy Spirit. Before I talk to the Holy Spirit, I pray to the Holy Spirit, I commune with the Holy Spirit, but from that day, it became an experience I cannot understand. Since from that day, any time I wake up to pray, you know, I used to tell you that I pray until you sense the presence, isn't it? Since that day, I notice that it is one thing for you to pray, commune with the Holy Spirit, and nothing happens. But you can pray, commune with the Holy Spirit, until the Holy Spirit manifests in your room, in your prayer room. You can say prayer. Finish your prayer. You can even pray for 10 hours and go. But I begin to realize since that time, often than not, in the place of prayer, the presence of God visits me. And I began to crave that presence. It's more important to me than my food. In fact, before I can pray and juggle and feel happy and go. But now, in the place of prayer, I do not feel satisfied until the presence manifests. You know, the Holy Spirit is everywhere. But the Holy Spirit is not in manifestation everywhere. And I begin to understand that it is the manifestation of the Holy Spirit as a person to you that releases grace. One day I had an experience that is strange to me. You know, usually when I pray to God, when I pray, for example, I say, God, I need direction on this. It will take a day or two that inspiration will come. And I will say, this is the answer. Or sometimes God will direct me to scripture and I'll read a verse and it will be a solution to that thing that I was looking for. One day in the presence of God, I noticed a very strange thing. I prayed to God and the Holy Spirit answered me. I know he was talking to me. I answered him back. I was saying, let me hear whether you speak back again. He spoke back again. I spoke to him. He spoke back again. I was having a conversation with the Holy Spirit. It was a very marvelous experience. I was used. I would just pray and expect God to answer in the way he will answer. But here he, he was there. I was talking. He was talking back using words, not impression. People of God, 
Holy Spirit is a person and he longs to commune with us not just as a, as a spirit that we cannot understand God wants to come to, to, to speak with us in the language that we will understand we must covet that relationship with him that is called that that relationship comes as a result of abiding because i used to walk up by five i say one day i walk up by five i will be in the place of prayer you know when you are in the place of prayer as you go on your knees what do you feel sometimes you think about what happened the last night or what will happen the, in the following day things go through your mind you find it difficult to concentrate i realize that i have been praying and living before the glory comes that's what i realized i was praying but not waiting for the presence to manifest you know moses and god tried to tell me about moses you know moses did not plan to stay on the mountain for 40 days he just went to pray and the bible said as moses abide there a cloud of glory came to the mountain and after 40 days the lord spoke to him as you're on your knees you are dying to self the holy spirit is trying to prepare you for a what for a visitation if you want to have fellowship with the holy spirit the price to pay is tarrying in the place of prayer it's not the time that you go to a place of prayer and you just pray and you go you stay there until you sense the presence and i know when the holy spirit comes in you know on the day of pentecost when the bible when they were waiting for the holy spirit god made sure that they had signs to know that he came the bible said he came like a word mighty rushing wind there was no mistake mistaking that the holy spirit has come in a manifest way i said the holy spirit can come any even now he's here but it's not in manifest presence here but i realized that things happen when the holy spirit began to come in a manifest way and one of the easiest way i notice as soon as the holy spirit steps in to have fellowship with you or oh, have noticed one thing time loses its word its essence you are struggling you know i used to pray using watch you know those days long time ago i had someone pray for seven hours so i said me to pray for seven hours so i keep a watch there after 30 minutes i will look after it is good it is good that is how you will learn but i noticed something that when the presence comes time disappears remember i went to a place by the roadside by the roadside I feel a sense to pray so I went not far from the road I need and I say I want to pray it was around four before I know it was seven by the roadside next time I was passing along that street and something said me tell me go pray I said I'm not going to pray <laughs> because I was afraid I was afraid the whole night there I refused to pray that time <laughs> actually I grieved the Holy Spirit isn't it but I was afraid. If I now go on my knees there, when will I what? When will I wake up? When the presence come and you are fellowship with the Holy Spirit, you go into the spirit realm. Another thing is tears. One time before you know, tears are what? Just dropping. The presence is there. Sometimes when you are praying, you suddenly discover that you have entered another gear. You understand what I'm talking about? The presence of the Holy Spirit is there. You need, you need to understand that when the Holy Spirit manifests himself to you as a person, he comes with packages. 
that is where the power is people say there is power in prayer the real power is not in prayer the real power is in the presence of the Holy Spirit because the prayer is to bring the presence the personality of the Holy Spirit you know I was sharing you after a few days that I begin to understand the understanding of God in terms of the Holy Spirit as a person you know I went and doctor says I have astigmatism I told you the story Shortly after that encounter, I had a swell time with the Holy Spirit, a communion with the manifest presence of the Holy Spirit. I remember after I finished prayer, I was about to go out and, and something says, don't carry your what? Don't carry your glasses today. So I said, okay. So I decided not to carry the glass. Usually after two hours without glass, headache will what? Headache will come. I didn't pray about it because as far as I was concerned, I'm getting old. It is okay if I use what? If I use glasses. So I did not even pray. But that night, I had a visitation from the Holy Spirit. And he what? He cured my astigmatism. The presence of God. When the presence comes, it changes things. Remember Moses, the Bible said he was 120 and his eye did not what? Did not deem. The Holy Spirit longs to commune with us. The Holy Spirit longs to relate with us. The passage we have read, if you look at it carefully, Jesus said, I will give you another word, comforter. In other words, Jesus was a comforter. When he was around, when the disciples had problem, what will they do? They will rush to Jesus and say, Jesus, help us, and he will help them. When they need bread, he gave them bread. When they need counseling, he gave them counseling. But he reached a point and he said, it is better for me to go. Why is it better? Because Jesus can only be at a place, what? At a time. But the Holy Spirit, the strange thing about the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit can be with him, can be with you, can be with him, can be with him at the same time doing different things. In fact, he can appear in different forms to one million people at the same time doing different things. That's why Jesus said it is better for me to go because the Holy Spirit will come. He will relate with you. But the Holy Spirit has come, but we have relegated the Holy Spirit to what? To relics. The Holy Spirit longs to relate with us. The Holy Spirit longs to talk to us. The Holy Spirit is a career of the power of God. You know, after that incident, some strange things happened. Now, sharing with the brother, one day, you know, I, I noticed something. I went ministering. I just opened my mouth to speak. And all of a sudden, I discovered that people are in the world in tears. One day I talked to a sister, she started crying. I talked to the second one, she started crying. I talked to the third one, she started crying. Say, God, what is happening? It is not like that before. And they all gave their life to Christ. The presence of God to release the power of God. And why I'm giving you these testimonies, I want you to understand that when you begin to relate with the Holy Spirit as a person, He begins to release certain graces in your life. He can perform operations. He can change destinies. Holy Spirit as a person. He is a lovely person. 
a lovely personality full of grace full of truth and yet I still struggle to relate with him as a person you know I traveled recently and I was expecting so much and God came and said you know what the Lord the Holy Spirit came and told me something he said up to now it was February we are in what <laughs> he said up to now you have not learned to relate with me the way you ought to relate with me so if only you will learn because the Holy Spirit does not interrupt us and the Holy Spirit is the boss you are the servant he, you cannot force him to do anything rather you are supposed to key in and allow him to direct you and I begin to submit myself to the Holy Spirit I say Holy Spirit help me Holy Spirit help me and I notice what the Holy Spirit is demanding is so much great that the Holy Spirit is demanding my hundred percent allegiance and my communion with him I don't know how many times are you supposed to talk to the Holy Spirit in a day you know the Holy Spirit was telling me you wake up in the morning you say good morning Holy Spirit thank you for today bless me today help me guide me today and the Holy Spirit is saying as soon as you left the house there is no Holy Spirit until you are coming back to sleep and you say Holy Spirit thank you the Holy Spirit was telling me why where did you have you left me all the eight hours you had work and I notice for the power of God to flow in my heart I need to relate with the Holy Spirit on a minute by minute basis I've made up my mind that I will relate with the Holy Spirit more than I relate with my wife for the last two weeks or so all I have received from the Holy Spirit is queries if I want to do something, I will just what? I will just go and do it and ask God the Holy Spirit to bless me. And the Holy Spirit said, you are not supposed to be like that. He said, do not be like a horse that rushes to do things. And do not be like a mule that refuses to what? move ahead. The relationship with the Holy Spirit is supposed to be moment by moment. The Holy Spirit made me to understand until you master that you will not experience the healing, the deliverance and the power of God that you needed in your life and ministry until you learn to relate with the Holy Spirit every single thing. Remember David the secret of David's success everything he will say go and bring the what? A pot. Every single thing and that is the level that God wants us to begin to walk where you see the Holy Spirit as a person. You want to go out of your house, Holy Spirit, I bless you, let's go out. You are stepping to your office, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. It's when you begin to recognize the Holy Spirit, the way the Holy Spirit should be recognized, you begin to realize that the Holy Spirit is more real than a human being you are seeing. The Holy Spirit is more real than the human being you are seeing with your eyes. As you begin to relate with him, he begins to give you ideas. It is that ideas that your prophet him will begin to manifest. Holy Spirit is a person. And he longs to all the problems. You know, we used to say we have a friend in Jesus. You know that Jesus is no longer here. Hello? The person you are supposed to be relating with is the Holy Spirit, not Jesus. Jesus has gone. He said, well, I'm going. You know, I'll give you another word, another comforter. He said, I will come to you. He's coming to you in the form of the Holy Spirit.
You see, I'm not here to tell you stories about the person of the Holy Spirit, but what I have in my heart, that you will encounter the Holy Spirit the way I encounter Him. That you will feel His presence. You know the Spirit, so you cannot see Him. But when the Spirit enters your room, you will know that the Spirit that enters your room, isn't it? How many of you spirits have entered your room? <laughs> when the Holy Spirit manifests in your room, you will know that He's there. And it is that time you take opportunity. Holy Spirit, now that you are here, this problem, please help me what? Solve it. Rise of the top, pray.